From Grim Nebulon to Grim Loblin, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. On today's episode, we have Jessica Ross. Hello. Michelle Wynn Bradley. <laughs> and Malika Lim Eubank. What's up? Well, how's everyone feeling right now? I'm ready to crush these two. Okay. <laughs> Damn. Well, last time I was on, I I magically won because I just sat here not knowing anything. And it was awesome. Uh, that's my strategy. Excuse me. <laughs> I don't know anything. So <laughs> I'm expecting to lose, apparently. Yeah, it's so weird because I don't know anything, but I'm also ready to crush. Yeah, so this is wild. A there bunch of ignorant idiots ready to destroy their enemies. <laughs> uh, the rules are very simple. These are a stack of statements. These are incorrect statements about the things you know and love or things with a strong fandom. It's up to you to find the thing that is incorrect, fuzz in, and correct me. All your corrections must be preceded with the phrase, um, actually, Jeopardy style. If you don't say it, I won't give you the point. Uh, and you can interrupt me whenever you want. This first question is about Sword Art Online, the anime, not the manga. Oh, good. Thank good. you yes. for the correction. Yeah. Uh, cool. you know, uh, Clarification is very important. It's very important. Yeah. Here we go. Over the course of three seasons, protagonist Kirigaya Kazuto, aka Kirito, makes his way across Sword Art Online, a virtual reality, massively multiplayer online game in which 10,000 people have been trapped. If they die in the game, they die in real life. Okay. Um, actually? Yes. <laughs> They're not trapped. They're there by choice. Uh, I guess they enter by choice, but they cannot leave. They are trapped there. <laughs> yeah. I'm really fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I like the attitude. Oh, yes, you gotta um, Actually, he's not the protagonist. <laughs> he is. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, sure. Actually, it's not a VR game. It's just a regular MMO that you play on a computer and there's no VR headset. So technically, it's not a VR, VR game. <laughs> That's not what we're going for. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and call okay. it here. Uh, we claimed that over the course of these three seasons, Kirito is in Sword Art Online, but in p point of fact, only in the first season. Because then he goes back, and I'm gonna throw this at you. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> well, only, <I'm> <laughs> only the first season is he in Sword Art Online. This, the, the second and third, you know. Is it? He's in and he's out, right? Or does he die? I can't remember. In the second, <laughs> he goes to different games, so like it's oh, all right. the same. It's always like a big like MMORPG. Uh, he's always trapped. But uh, in the in the other seasons, uh, it's Gun Gale Online and oh, then yeah. Alfheim online. Fuck wild. <laughs> <laughs> it's very striking to me in, in this concept that like to be trapped in a video game that will, if you die there, you will die. And then to be like, hey, they've got another one of these out. You want to try it out? <laughs> <I'll go back. laughs> I mean, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> Stupid kid, he deserves you, to die. <laughs> yeah, truly. Like, tw if you get, it's like fool me once, you know, shit. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, that whole thing. Like, if you get, if even twice, it's like you got trapped that's twice in, a, in an RPG yeah, that tries to kill you. Don't put it on a third time. Done with RPGs now. <laughs> Stick to puzzle games or something. No points for that one, unfortunately. Yes. Oh, but, good start, good start. Um, but we'll move on. We'll find <laughs> one of the classic DC heroes we meet in the Supergirl TV series is John Jones, aka Martian Manhunter, the last living. Martian since the death of his father. Among the more than 300 year old Martian's abilities are telepathy, telekinesis, and super strength, though he's not as strong as a Kryptonian like Supergirl. Um, Jeff. actually, uh, his father wasn't the last, he's not the last Martian. His mom's out there somewhere. Jess, you found the thing that's wrong, but you your know correction I is did. incorrect. I it out. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, so you're you're correct in that he's not the last Martian. I'll give you the point unless someone else can be more specific about the correction. Yeah, Michelle. Um, actually, this is probably wrong. Yeah. I think, and he thinks he's the last one, but like the whole there's like a whole bunch of Martians like just living somewhere else. Like there's a whole like, because th isn't there like a whole Martian? Like, look, it's like a bunch of Martians out there. <laughs> I remember <laughs> no, there's like a bunch of Martians out there. I'm just remembering a like a, a Justice League or something where like he like meets other people and he's like, oh shit, where were you guys? And they're like, well. And call you or something like that. No, that didn't exist. I don't. I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm not here to help call you. you. If you're I looking to me for advice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you can bail me out here, right? Oh, this sounds pretty cool, though, right? Isn't that fun? That, that makes, makes sense. sense. <laughs> Malika, do you know? Um, yes. Actually, yes. as somebody who actually watched.
watches the television show and doesn't remember all the subplots. Sure. <laughs> it's about not the mommy, but the daddy. There's mm. a daddy and a son storyline with the Martians, if I remember correctly. Um, uh, so you're saying the daddy is still alive? Yeah, the dad's still alive. Well, he dies in the season. I do remember this. Uh, he does die, so uh, that is not what we're looking oh. for. Um, uh, Jess, we're gonna we'll give that point Hell to yeah. you. Just give a one pointer. Right? Yeah. Just, what were you looking for? Then? What, what we're looking for is that John Jones is the last. Green Marsh. Oh, oh, uh, oh, yes, there's a red one. Ah, I'm about to throw this They're all white one. Martians. They're yeah. still white Martians. Uh, uh, white Martians, uh, of course, drive like this. And Green, Mar <laughs> <laughs> green Martians wow. drive like this. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, uh, great. Well, that point will go to Jess for at least sniffing out uh, where the wrong thing is. And uh, we will move on <laughs> to our next question. The Elder Scrolls games all take place primarily on the continent of Tamriel. In each installment of the series, a different Elder Scroll, aka Adric Prophecy, plays an important story role at some point. For instance, Elder Scrolls V Skyrim has a questline involving the Dragon Elder Scroll, and in Elder Scrolls Online, there are questlines involving the Elder Scroll of Nemok among others. This might be dumb. Um, actually, it's not all on Tamriel. Tamriel is where the uh, the Red Guards live, and then the Viking uh, uh, dudes <laughs> live. Uh, you know, that place is called something else. Uh, that's a great guess, but that's not that's not correct. That's not what we're going for here. <laughs> um, actually, there's no dragons in Elder Scrolls. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> you said it's all just, dragons, <laughs> baby. You just said one word. And I was like, I know the word dragon. You so I'm mean say it that right one. away. You go into the wolf town, and they're like, it. "There's a dragon. You got to deal with this random dude." And you're like, "Let me go and get this." And then the Jarl's like, "Thanks for taking care of the dragon. I'm now sorry. you got to do 50 other things in my town before you can do I'm anything." Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> Clearly, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut on this one. She is part of my clan. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know nothing about anything. So one thing I know that the dragon. I know I dragons. That's right. <laughs> Uh, it is true that in these kinds of games, no one can fucking do anything for themselves. It's always like, hey, while you're here, could you do my laundry and get me five apples? Hey, like, hey Dovah Keen, who can breathe like a dragon, <laughs> uh, could you go get my apples? <laughs> Collect your own damn um, apples. Um, actually, yeah. they don't all take place in the same continent. Uh, they do, they do. Oh, I'll go ahead and call it. Let's uh, call it. Uh, the Elder Scrolls themselves don't actually appear that much in the Elder Scrolls games. They do not appear until uh, Elder Scrolls IV, Oblivion. Oh. And before oh. that, it was just like kind of a cool name that they're like, yeah, th this will be called the Elder Scrolls. We'll figure out what that means later. And there's Zero Scrolls. Zero Scrolls. <laughs> that Skyrim game was the first game that really got me into video games. Really? I had just moved to Los Angeles and I was unemployed. And I was living in That's that a world for time to play a really Sky. long time. <laughs> I would walk outside and like just see a plant and be like, boop, like think in my mind like I'm collecting it to like hoard in my little house for later. Well, no points for that one. This next question comes to us from a fan. In Rick Reardon's The Heroes of Olympus trilogy, each book reveals a demigod child of one of the major gods of the Greek pantheon, namely Poseidon, Zeus, and Hades. However, we also meet demigod children of Roman deities like Jupiter and Mars, and Egyptian deities like Osiris and Nekbet. Yeah. Um, actually, that statement separates Greek and Roman mm -hmm. deities, but they're really the same. So when you said Mars, he has a Greek name, which is Ares. Uh -huh. So I think that's what's wrong with the story. <laughs> I agree with you that that's bananas that they separate Greek and Roman gods, but they do because uh, they're basically like the same gods. They just have different names. Uh, but in this series, they do separate Greek gods and Roman gods. Um, actually, Poseidon isn't a Greek god. Poseidon is a Greek god. All the time? All the time. Man, you can't yeah. stop him from being a great guy. <laughs> All right. Um, is it, um, actually, they, they don't have any Egyptian deities in this series. It's just the the Greek and Roman ones. You're close. Yeah. You're uh, not quite there. Oh. We'll, we'll go ahead and call it. You're, you were close, Michelle. The Egyptian deities don't have demigod children. So we do see them in the series. There are Egyptian deities, but they don't have these demigod children Maybe like the other ones children. do. Hey, they, maybe they, they are. If you can't have children, then they're the they're the they're their own they're children? Like they, yeah. So you, you're, you're like, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, if you think about it, if you're thinking about it, maybe I'm the one chicken, who's wrong egg, here. Egg, chicken, yeah, right? where does yeah. where does one come mm -hmm, from? Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have demigod children, they do take hosts. Uh, and I can't elaborate any further on this because I'm not familiar with the series. <laughs> they uh, take hosts? They take 
posts. That's kind of like having a child. Like you it's put all of your hopes like being and dreams a into it and then you <laughs> want it to do what you want it to do. Uh -huh. Well, this will bring us to our first shiny question of the Ooh. game. This is a game that we're calling Mystery Box. <laughs> so we have here a, a mystery board game. Inside this box, we have six game pieces from six different board games. Oh, yeah. um, uh, oh, and what I'm gonna ask you to do is, uh, one at a time, to reach in without looking, take one out. Okay. Whoever can identify the most will get the point. Okay. Um, it's a little bomb. Mm -hmm. Isn't there that like, Seven Wonders of the World, something like that. There is a game called Seven Wonders, but this is not from Seven Wonders. So, okay, can uh, I eat this? Uh, please do not eat it. Actually, go ahead and put it back put in it the back. box. What the hell is this? Ah, F. Well, hey, actually, um, actually, technically, this is part of like a lot of games because they sell these just <laughs> loose, so you can use them as inspiration tokens or mm -mm, bad guys mm -mm, or currency. Yeah. There is a specific game where these these are very prominently featured. <laughs> Isn't the game where it's just like. A big plastic grid. You gotta put the colors in to match like the shape on the card. Uh, it is not. No, no. Pass. Pass. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm not gonna fish around. I'm just gonna grab the first thing. Okay. I didn't fish around. I did. I fish around. Yeah. All right. A flat thing. <laughs> oh, oh! I know this game. Oh, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> damn it. Uh, so it's a flat card. It says uh, upper basement. Oh, on the damn. back, it says research laboratory. The only board game that is in my brain right now is Power Grid, but I know it's definitely not that. It is not Power Grid, okay. I'm, I'm sorry to say. Pass. Pass. Jess, let's see, let's see if you can find something in there. All right. Seven passes. Right. <clears throat> I'm gonna try this dude. Is this like some kind of juiced up clue? <laughs> juiced up clue, clue, extreme edition. <laughs> it's ain't your daddy's clue. Uh, it is not juiced up clue. All right. I don't know. B-movie the game. <laughs> <laughs> it is not B-movie the game. Jerry Seinfeld as a game. There should be at least two more. Okay, so I'm also pulling out this uh, tiny Rupes Cubes. Power Grid. It's not Power Grid. <laughs> just gonna let's say go. Power Grid until yeah, it's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, maybe at this point, let's just go ahead and open it since we've, okay. since we've uncovered most okay. of them. Okay, well this is, I think, one of the last things. Oh, is this, um, Code names? That is code Fuck names. Yeah. That is code names. So that's we got one for Jess. One we haven't talked about is this um, tiny cannon. Uh, orange cannon. Mm-hmm. Mm, nah, got a blank. I think this one will go to Jess for being able to identify the, uh, the one code names. But is there anything? You are the one to beat. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, this is never the case. <laughs> yeah. I'm not... What were the board games? We'll, okay, though? we'll go yeah. through. If, if it sounds like we've we've I'll run up against the wall. There. I don't think I know any. I've played this one before, and I'm gonna. You know, smack this in my forehead when I. <laughs> I feel like I play this one too. Is that like a horror remember. themed one? Is it that like a? Very well, might be. Uh, like a house on haunted hill. Do you mean like, like betrayal a... on house on the hill? Yeah, that's Mar not. Malika, that is correct. <laughs> that is word for word the exact game that we're yeah. looking for. It is betrayal at the house on the hill. Like, Cal, I don't know. We kind of got there organically, but <laughs> I gave it to her. So we'll go through them. Uh, the the B tile that is from Hive, the game Hive, just sort of like uh, we should have just, just listed said pollen, bee, bee flowers, bee things. Honey, yeah, yeah, honey, yeah. Honey, yeah. the board it's, game. What else we missing there? Uh, bomb boy. Uh, the bomb. The bomb is from Stratego. Um, oh, Stratego. Okay. Cool. The little cannon is from Risk. Uh, oh, Risk. Yeah. yeah, these aren't all modern classics. board games. Some of them are classics. <laughs> uh, Risk. The, the little cubes, those are from Pandemic. Those are the disease oh, cubes. The disease oh. game. Son of a uh, yeah, I think I've heard of that. That one. is it. So that, is, that was one for Jess, one for Malika. You'll both get one point for this segment. Oh, yeah. And we will get that game out of here. Show it at the bottom Woo. of the game. Oops, me make big mistake, and you catch. Here are some of our favorite corrections from you, the viewers. From our exclusive dropout Discord, Panders Bear says, I'm actually, Trap said that Dr. Horrible's last name was Horrible, but his real name is actually Billy Buddy, and Dr. Horrible is just his supervillain name. That's one point for Panders Bear, if that is your real name. Flantastic82 says, Um, actually, Hydra Station is located on Hydra Island, several miles off the shore of the main island. In addition, the Looking Glass isn't on the island either, it's an underwater station. Flantastic82 has really scrutinized this map, you know, they're not getting lost. We're going to now uh, have a statement about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Stands are psychic manifestations of a person's fighting spirit, and their abilities vary greatly. 
Cream creates a void-like portal to disintegrate enemies. Gold experience turns inorganic objects into plants or animals. And Death 13 traps people in a dream world. Stands must initially be manifested by a person, but some continue existing after their user's death, like Notorious B.I.G., or are bound to an object, like Anubis, which is bound to a sword. Um, actually, no, stay inside with our users. I don't think they can be bound to objects. They can be bound to objects. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, actually, Anubis isn't bound to a sword. It, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so we have spoken. Um, actually, Notorious B.I.G. has nothing to do with the sand may. Uh, unfortunately, like, unfortunately. like it's, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it does. Um, uh, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of sort of musical references in JoJo, uh, or so I'm told. <laughs> the answer we're looking for here is that, uh, so we said that, um, that a stand, uh, is manifested by a person, but it doesn't have to be manifested by a person. Oh, cause dogs have stands too! Dogs oh have my stands. god! Oh no! <laughs> I'm fine. But I'm so mad because literally I have a friend who has 7,000 of the little, the, the black and white dog and plush like, all over her house. Like, like walls of it everywhere. It literally collects it like a crazy person. And I couldn't get that. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Uh, yes, what we were looking for was uh, that stand, uh, animals can also manifest stands. We're having not like a usual people. suspects moment I right now. Right yeah. now. Yeah. All of the I just have all like this, room. A it was tiny there thing. all along. <laughs> yeah, I think you ever know they were going, oh, in my head. Um, <laughs> uh, here's our next statement 2005's The Descent followed a crew of spelunkers trapped in a system of uncharted tunnels after an accidental cave in. As they search for an exit, they discover humanoid monsters who begin to pick them off one by one. The US release ended with survivor Catherine infected with a parasite that caused the underground creatures to turn into monsters, with the implication that she is now going to spread it to the world outside the caves. Um, actually, they thought that that was too sad, so they have an alternate ending that was released for the US that it's like her in a car and it was a dream or something like that. Um, uh, uh is, is that is that there's two yeah. different there's two different uh, uh, uh endings uh, the us has a different one because we couldn't handle the sadness <laughs> uh what so suss out <laughs> what you go from that uh so i think what's going on here is your your right your kind you can't handle it <laughs> you can't handle Truth. All right, Jess, I'll give you the point. <laughs> Woo! Uh, but here's what we're looking for. What is the thing? I don't know. Uh, while similar, the movie I just described is a description of The Cave, which is a different movie oh. entirely oh, the from, the, from The Descent. I literally, as you're saying that, I'm like, I didn't know that movie. Maybe it's a different two Descent movies. I was you were saying They're that. two very, very similar movies. So you did find the like the different the different uh, one of the differences which is the endings uh but it is two different movies oh my god yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've never heard of the cave i've only seen the descent there's a reason <laughs> there's a reason yeah apparently so uh point will go to jess you're the one to beat, one to beat. this is insane you know there are all these gimmicks that promise a great night's sleep but here's the thing I don't care what kind of topper you have, how heavy your blanket is, if you're sleeping on a terrible mattress, you're gonna have terrible sleep. It's just that simple. That's why I recommend sleeping on a purple mattress. That's because only purple mattresses have the grid. It's a super stretchy, ultra squishy material that adapts and flexes around pressure points and doesn't retain heat. The Gel Flex Grid is amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips, no matter how you sleep. Unlike memory foam, which remembers everything, thanks to the Gel Flex Grid, purple mattresses bounce back as you move and shift, so you never get that I'm stuck feeling people sometimes get with memory foam. Purple sent me a pillow a couple months ago, and I was like, sure, I'll try this out. I'm still using it. It's my preferred pillow now. It's honestly a pretty good pillow. Try your purple mattress risk-free with free shipping and returns. Financing is available too. Getting a great night's sleep starts with having a great mattress. Get a purple mattress, go to purple.com slash actually and use code actually. For a limited time, you can get 10% off your order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash actually, promo code actually for 10% off your order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash actually, promo code actually. Terms apply. Jean M. Owl's Earth's Children series is a prehistoric epic of six books that takes place in the Paleolithic era. It centers on Ayla, a blonde Neanderthal woman who almost single-handedly invented the Adeladel, the Travois, the Needle, the Brassiere, Digitalis-derived medicine, cookies, and domesticated wolves and horses. Damn, get it, girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, Michelle. actually, she 
Uh, Neanderthals weren't alive during the Paleolithic period, so it was a different period. I don't know which one it is, though. That is incorrect, Gosh. although you are circling kind of around <laughs> the right oh answer. <laughs> um, actually, she wasn't Neanderthal? Modern human? Uh, she wasn't Neanderthal, uh, but she also wasn't modern human. Oh! Uh, I'll give I it, said too much! But I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give it to you unless someone can tell me what she, what she is. Um, actually, she was a monkey? She was not a monkey. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead. We'll give you the, the point. She is Cro-Magnon, um, but uh, the the series uh, features a, um, a, a a very strong romantic theme with her Neanderthal boyfriend, oh. uh, John Delar. Uh, Damn. Uh, the, Wait, <laughs> so what, uh, can we back up? She yes. invented the bra? Yes. The character is is such a, like, like she does everything she is like like anything that was ever invented it's like yeah ayla did that uh <laughs> like anything any any bit of cleverness it's always like yes and then i figured this out there's also Book a five. whole lot of sex in these books from what oh, i recall yeah. it's a real did you say this was a children's series? this is not a children's okay. series. <laughs> wow. this is kid Jess would have this loved is it far now. from a children's series <laughs> that point will go to malika and we will go on to our second Shiny. Oh, question. shiny. This is a game that we call Fictionary. I'm going to give you the name of a creature or monster from folklore. Mm. It'll be up to you to draw it to the best of your ability. Your creature is the Al Mirage. The Al Mirage? Yes, Al Mirage. Okay. 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 So Jess, um, share with us your this Al Mirage. Is the La Mirage. <laughs> uh, she's a Vegas showgirl. This is Las Vegas in the background. Uh, this is she, but she's also in the desert. And then this is a mirage that she's seeing, and she has a feather for a hand. Fantastic. And that there she is. There she is. Beautiful, a beautiful drawing there, Michelle. Let's see what you got. <clears throat> I feel like. This character, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is, might have one of these things: a hat, a nice smile, uh -huh. a nose and eyes, maybe weird shoes, um, wings. Could mm -hmm. be an maybe, you maybe. Know? Uh, just like a, a piece of paper with his name on it. Sure. Maybe his name is Al, and Al. It comes from a place called Mirage. It's a very like comic booky kind of thing, yeah. You know, where it's like it's, it's me, Al Mirage, yeah, wow. from the Mirage, Mirage. dimension. Yeah, to grant your wishes, kids. <laughs> I live under your bed. Um, so that's. That's me. I probably got at least one thing right. All right, uh, uh, Malika. I, I, I similarly, you know, when I heard Al Mirage, <laughs> anything that has Al in the beginning, yeah. it's usually Arabic in origin. Mm -hmm. So probably this is somewhere in the Middle East, uh, and this is part of a mirage that you see. Um, I try to put as many animal parts together as possible. So you got a cat that has like kangaroo legs and like duck feet. And then also there's palm trees and uh, a body of water. I figure something <laughs> so there's like gotta be right. Yeah. 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 Kitty kangaroo? It's like a kitty He's kangaroo. So cute. <laughs> oh my God. Let's take a look at what the Al Mirage should look like. Oh, oh, oh shit! Oh. Holy shit, dude, you're like so cool. You're like, this is basically it. Well, what we're looking for is a rabbit with a unicorn horn. Um, uh, but it's got like the rabbit, like that strong hind closest. legs. You never said rabbit. I was listening oh, for rabbit. I thought they were rabbit legs First. though over kangaroo yeah, legs. True. Interesting. They both are for jumping. Interesting. It has two eyes. Two Look, eyes. I was willing to be very lenient on this, and it's like it's like if you had said the word rabbit, I was gonna give it to you. Oh. Damn. Um, um, teeth. Teeth. Don't make me yeah, feel like yeah, the bad guy yeah, here. Yeah, I think that's yeah. reasonable. You never once said either rabbit or unicorn horn. It looks just like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know we don't always get everything right, and if you want to correct us, you can do that by tweeting at Um Actually Show or by going to the Dropout Discord to the Um Actually Corrections channel. If we like what you have to say, we might even throw it in a future episode. Our next question is about Legend of Korra. In The Legend of Korra, we're introduced to Republic City, a more technologically advanced vision of society in the Avatar universe than we saw in The Last Airbender. There are four notably prominent large statues decorating Republic City, all of characters from the original Avatar series, Aang, Zuko, Sokka, and Toph. Um, actually, there's no statue of Toph. Incorrect. <laughs> um, actually, there's five. That's correct. Oh, yeah. oh my god, you got there. You got there, girl. Do you, oh. do you know who the fifth uh, statue is? Yes, his is? sister. Uh, no. Oh, man. 
God. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Uh, 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 no, I, well, I'll still give you the point unless anyone can tell me who the fifth statue is. The White uh, Martian. It is not the White Martian. Oh, there is a fifth statue, uh, uh, which is an unnamed cabbage merchant. Uh, oh, they, I forgot uh, about that. His statue is outside the Cabbage Corps, which is run by his descendants. So, yep, these uh, these four, uh, no statue for Katara, but a Why statue for the no unnamed Cabbage for- Katara, she's the best character. <laughs> Fight me on this. Better than the unnamed cabbage merchant? <laughs> cabbage guy. Well, that point will go to Malika. All right, here is um, probably for the, maybe for the last time on the series. We'll see. But here's a Game of Thrones question because that show's over now. <laughs> we can't and the be books living will never come out. The books will out. never come out. So we're never going to ask another question about it. He'll make some stupid side book about oh, Ray yeah, that you I know, give a shit about. You'll know there'll be like an we'll encyclopedia the, about yeah. the, yeah. the flowers and how wet he was in a tower. <laughs> Here we go. Arya Stark managed to personally take the lives of only four people on her kill list. Walder Frey, Polliver, Rorge, and Marin Trant. By the end of the series, we see everyone else on the list die by some other means, although some people were removed from her list before dying, like Melisandre, Sir Ilan Payne, Beric Dondarrion, and Thoros of Myr. Um, actually, yes. she only took out three people on her list? No, she does take out She four. takes out those. Four. Who the fuck are the middle two? Oliver huh? and Rorge? Yeah. <laughs> they run a comedy duo that's oh, sort yeah. of like, it's kind of like an Abbott and Costello oh, thing. Oh, yeah, I have those little pop heads. I love those, too. <laughs> um, actually, some of those people who you said were dead before are not. You, at that time. You've hit on the right thing. I'll, uh, that there is, there is someone I, na- I do claim that everyone on the list died, but that is, n- we see everyone on the list died, but that's not true. All right, well, we'll just go down the list here. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, we don't see the mountain die, so he may have survived uh, that fall um, from atop a tower into I think a he, flaming pit. I think he's pretty definitively dead. We <laughs> I mean, see him. I mean, he's kind of dead already, though. Uh, he might have. Frankenstein himself up. He's having a fucking cocktail at the uh, tavern I mean, right now. Technically speaking, I guess the mountain died twice. You know, yeah. like he's more dead than anyone else. Hmm. hmm. We'll give that point to, to Malika. <gasps> um, <gasps> Uh, the answer we're looking for is that Illin Payne, uh, we never see Illin Payne die. Um, he gets sent to the, to the wall, uh, and there's like a lot of battles going on, but we never actually see him die in the series. I thought they chopped his head off. I thought Jon Snow chopped his head off. Uh, not what am I Ilan thinking Payne. of? He's like the bald little bitch. He's always whining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got the right guy. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Wait, no, wait. John Snow, no, he says, mm-hmm. you're coming with me. I'm chopping your he head He says, off. you're a bald bitch. You're coming <laughs> with me. I'm taking your head. No. He sasses him at one point. He's like, you're going to the tower. He's like, no, I'm not. And then the, um, I'm about to say the bad nickname that I call that man. I cannot say that. John Snow executes Janos Slint. That bitch. Ah, uh, well, uh, the point will go to Malika. And um, and the real point will go to Ilan Payne, who maybe survived. Ooh. <laughs> oh, spin off. Spin off. This will bring us to our last shiny question of the game. Mm. Uh, this is a game called Hear Me Roar. I'm going to play a sound for you and see if you can identify it. This time, we are doing pets from cartoons. Cartoon Aww. pets. Uh, so we're going to play uh, play a sound and see if you can identify either the character or the property that it's from. Better Whoever can get the most will get the point. Okay. Let's hear that first sound. Quack, 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 quack. Oh, I'm... Oh wait, it's not commercials. I was gonna say the Affleck dog. It's not the Affleck dog. I literally was like, wait, this is from shows or this is from TV? (laughs) These are all from shows. They are not from advertisement. That one time in Teen Titans when Beast turns into a duck? Uh, no. (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna pass on this one. That is Gunter from Adventure Time. Aww. Uh, Let's hear the second one. And uh, how about this picture? I don't know, I think I'm making a weird face in it. Um, (laughs) actually, it's the parrot, Iago. Yes, that is Iago. Yes. Yes. Who gives me, like, Gilbert Godfrey? Are they all Gilbert Godfrey? They're all Gilbert Godfrey. Oh, okay. 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 (laughs) You should say that at top. Yeah, Yeah, these are all Gilbert Godfrey characters. (laughs) That is so funny that that was the next one. Uh, uh, Let's hear number three. (laughs) (laughs) What? It sounds like a noise I make when I'm sad. <laughs> I know. Is it, um, what's that show? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to land on something there. Oh, this is hard. Uh, this is from Rick and Morty. This is uh, Snuffles the dog. Oh, uh, no. um, when, when he's saying, uh, or perhaps saying, I like lasagna. Let's hear it one more time. 
lasagna. Did he say that while he was eating lasagna, though? Oh, uh, no. no, no. All right, let's hear the next one. <laughs> is it that thing from Futurama, the little black thing that actually talks for real? And uh, like drive a scooty puff? Uh, it is uh, Nibbler. It is not Aww. Nibbler. <laughs> There's so many cats in cartoons. Mm. That, there's no way. It looks like some kind of monster thing. <laughs> like it's like a Frankenstein kind of thing. Uh, any guesses? It sounds like a couple of uh, stumps stump here. This is from a very specific episode of The Simpsons where there's a, a gag where it's like, I think we're neglecting the pets too much. They're trying to get our attention. And he just cuts to them trying oh, to talk. Yeah. It's both Santa's Little Helper and Snowball, too, oh, yeah. uh, uh, with, with Santa's Little Helper saying, we love you. Um, so uh, either Santa's Little Helper or Snowball, too, would mm. or The Simpsons would have been acceptable. Let's hear the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Voltron. Uh, it's not Voltron. These are Fuck. all pets. Um, actually, air conditionery. <laughs> Beloved In pet. Incorrect. Uh, um, actually, something from Futurama. That's correct. <gasps> Woo! Uh, and uh, uh, I'll give you the point for being able to to identify Damn, where it's from. Uh, I'm just gonna name and, cartoons yeah, with robots in it, them. Uh, uh, it is actually it's not a robot sound. Okay. Um, this is the hypno toad. Oh! Uh, this is the, the the sound the hypno toad makes. The good one. That's a good one. All right, let's hear the next one. <laughs> <laughs> It's me, it's me. It is, it is not you. It's just me, like five oh minutes ago. <laughs> Sounds like someone's saying, Ma! Ma! <laughs> I'm actually the, the dinosaur show. Dinosaurs? Dinosaurs. <laughs> it is not dinosaurs. Uh, any other guesses? Okay, this uh, this is Eek the Cat uh, from the show of the same name, Eek the Cat. Uh, Whoa, what a throwback. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah like, Eek the Cat. Couldn't it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, wow. uh, all right, we got one more okay. left here. I'm actually He-Man. It's not He-Man. And these are pets. These are pets, yes. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. I was going to say, is it? Because I'm like, lots of creatures out there. Is it yeah. that dog from Kong Kong Fui? Uh, no. <laughs> So close, right? <laughs> uh, any guess from you, Malika? Or I'm like torn because I'm like, oh, there are things like Pokemon and Digimon out there, mm -hmm. but those aren't pets necessarily. They're companions. They're equal. Uh, I would say we we would consider those pets. Oh, well, that I just mean, opened up a whole new world. Okay. Capture them and keep them in a ball for their whole lives. I'm actually Pokemon. It is Pokemon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh I'm actually Meowth. It's not Meowth. Yeah. No. It is Pokemon, so I'll give it to you, Jess, um, unless yeah. Malika, unless you can identify what Pokemon this is. I, I'm actually either Hitmonchan or uh, Hitmonlee. That is a guess that makes a lot of sense, but it's neither of them. Oh, man. Uh, uh, this is Staryu. Weirdly enough, Staryu oh, just makes like yeah. a weird, he just makes a weird haya sound. He doesn't say Staryu. He doesn't even have a mouth, though. Yeah, and it, almost every other Pokemon just says their own name. Right. And for some reason, it's like, hey, uh. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. What? You, you didn't... That's true. Hitmonchan and Lee, they, they're like, hey, doesn't have a yeah. mouth? I mean, it's a big, like, starfish. I mean, I guess there's there's something on the other side. That's true. Where is that sound coming from? Big butthole. That's part. Well, that was one for Malika, two for Jess. So that point will go to Jess. Oh, yeah. Very good. Well, this brings us to our last question of the game, <laughs> which, as always, concerns real life skills. High beams can be useful when driving in low visibility situations. If it's dark and you're on a remote road with no nearby traffic, your high beams let you see farther and potentially drive safer. High beams also increase visibility in some weather conditions like rain or snow. However, in fog, your low beams or fog lights are recommended since high beams can reflect off the fog and actually decrease visibility. I'm actually, I'm actually, I don't think you're supposed to use high beams at any 
any kind of rain or snow at all. That's correct. Yeah. Ah! Uh, rain or snow, you should also be using the low beams for the same reason as the fog. It can reflect yes. off the water droplets and decrease your That's visibility. Okay. Just wonder wipers, wonder wipers. Oh, just, con just constantly doing that. Squeak, 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 squeak. That point will go to Michelle. Okay, guys, at one point. Four, one, four. Woo! That means Jess and Malika are tied for this Yay! one. Um, you'll both both go home with the win. Um, thank you so much for playing this with us today, guys. Uh, and thank you for watching. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually.